Hallelujah. Ephesians 5, 18. And it says, and do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. Let's read the next scripture. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is a debauchery, but ever be filled and stimulated with the Spirit. We'll stop right there. Stimulated with the Spirit. Saturated with the Spirit. And that's what we're reaching to. So we can be saturated. So just as it's so normal to wake up in the morning and breathe, it'll be so normal to do the things that God has called us to do. Amen. So normal to heal the sick. So normal to be a soul winner. Yes, sir. You see? So normal to be spiritually minded. Yeah. So normal to have a hunger and desire for the word of God. Yeah. You see, we should naturally have all those things. We should have that going on in our life, especially in the days that we're living right now. Yes, sir. So, Father, Thank you. as we hear the word today, let the word be life unto our spirit, food to our spirit man. Let it be understanding unto our mind, O oh God, that our minds will be renewed, O oh God, so we can think more and more like you and therefore act more and more like you through the love that you have shared abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. Now, we thank you in advance that you're stirring even right now. You're refreshing. You're refiring us even right now to your word. And we give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Everybody believe that? Say amen. Amen. Now, we've been talking about being saturated or stimulated by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. So we're not to be drunk with wine and other things, to be drunk uh, in the word, drunk in the spirit, you yeah. see. You have to be thirsting after that. Yeah. Now, in order for a drunk in the natural to get drunk, what does he have to do? Drink. Take one or two drinks? No. He just keeps drinking and keeps drinking and keeps drinking until he comes inebriated or he becomes sloppy drunk, yeah. you see? So the same we have to do if we want to be full of God or full of the Holy Ghost, we've got to fill ourselves up every day. We got to go to the gas station every day, multiple times every day, and fill up and fill up and fill up. We read one scripture, and it says, and be being filled. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's a continuation. That's not a one-time deal. Yeah. You know, when we go to, the, when we uh, fill up our cars, that's not a one-time one deal. We got to go back again and again and again and again if we want to keep driving our car. You see, if we want to be like Jesus, then we're going to have to fill up, keep ourselves full. Even when Jesus was upon the earth, he showed us how to do it. He literally showed us how to do it. He preached and taught the word of God, and he healed the sick, and he stepped away for prayer every time. And he came back out doing the same thing, same procedure every day. That's what he was doing. So if Jesus had to do that to be full of the Spirit, how much more do we have to do it? You see, we're no different. We're made in the image and likeness of God. Jesus is our elder brother just showing us how to do it. And in another way, he put the Holy Ghost in, inside of us to help us to do it. So we're without excuse. Now, Let's pick up where we left off at. I want to talk a little bit more about being roused to action. You see, roused to action, because that's what we need today as a church, because I'm not hearing too much about the church. I don't think you're hearing too much about the church. See, when Jesus, let me give you a shocker right here, because everybody's looking for Jesus to come back. 
Oh, the rapture is going to come. Rapture is going to come. Let me, let, me, let me show you something right quick, according to the word of God. He said he is coming back for a glorious, spotless church. Do you see that yet? I don't see it yet. What does that mean? That means, just like in the New Testament, after they got filled with the Holy Ghost, they began to stir up trouble everywhere. The church just got in trouble over and over and over preaching Jesus, preaching the Word of God, preaching the good news. You see, there was a stirring in the earth. And that's what has to happen in these last days. We've got to begin to stir ourselves up so that there'll be a stirring in the earth. So they'll get tired of you healing the sick. They'll get tired of you witnessing the people. They'll get tired of you going and praying for people in the hospitals. You see, the church, they're going to get mad at the church just like they got mad at Jesus. Just like they got mad at, at Peter and Paul. There's no difference, you see? So when we begin to rise up and take our position, we're going to know it. Yes, sir. And we're going to know when Jesus really going to, when Jesus comes back, we really are going to know the season. Because it's going to be so much in the news about the church, what the church is doing, and, and everything, that it's just going to be a hot issue. There's going to be people martyred for the cause of Christ. You see, we haven't seen it over here in our country yet. It's already happening over in Iran and different countries like that. It's been happening for a while, but it's going to come over here. There's some people literally called to be martyrs. Praise God. And actually, it's an honor to be a martyr for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So we got to get ready. So let's look at some examples here in the word of God. I want to start with... Uh, John, the fifth chapter, let's turn over to John the five, John 5, Big John, <laughs> Big John 5, and we're going to talk about the pool of Bethesda, hallelujah, glory be to God. Now, there is in Jerusalem by the sheep gate a pool which is called in Hebrew Bethesda, having five porches. There are a lot of people there waiting. In these lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of water. Stop right there just for one minute. Uh, remember last time, uh, last Sunday, I mentioned about the chocolate milk yeah. in the glass. Yeah. It, the chocolate that's mixed in the milk and stirred up. I want you to keep that in mind because how many let, how many let your chocolate fall back to the bottom of the glass? You don't have to raise your hand. I'm just messing with you. But we got to keep that chocolate mixed in there so you can only tell that it's chocolate milk, not white milk. Chocolate milk, that's what it's supposed to be. You see, it's supposed to make that white milk chocolate, you see. So if we keep it stirred, you see, what we're doing, like we said before, we're stirring up the gifts. We're stirring up what God has already ordained for you and I to be in this earth. Actually, he's written a scroll for each and every one of us about our life. We actually have more to do with how our life turns out than God does. You hear that? By your interest and in what he has made plans for your life. You see, when you begin to reach out in faith and say, God, I, I want to do whatever you called me to be, and you start reaching out that way, I guarantee you, he'll start giving you dreams. He'll start giving you visions. He'll start sending a prophet to you. He'll send somebody and give you a word. He'll start giving you direction to the spirit of God. But see, many times we don't do that. We're busy doing all, everything else except for seeking after God's will. So I want to encourage you, seek after God's will because he desires 
to stir up the water in you and I so that we can see clearly which way we're supposed to go, what we're supposed to do, what we're supposed to say, because we just don't supposed to go and witness to everybody. Contrary to belief. I tried that before and found myself tied up sometime with people for hours and wasted all of that time. And if I had followed the Holy Ghost, I would have, I would have had good success and I would have been fruitful. And when I turned that and started doing it the other way, it started working. Because some people just want to take up your time. That's all they want to do. Waste your time. Now, who is that? The devil is behind that. He'll set you up. Just as God wants to set you up for people that you're supposed to influence and I'm supposed to influence, the devil's trying to set you up with people that you won't be able to influence. Oh, he's setting you up with people that are trying to influence you. Turn your life in a different direction. So we've got to look on the inside. Now, it says, in these lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of water. For an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. Then whoever stepped in first, after the stirring of the water, was made well of whatever disease he had. Now here is a, a, here's a stirring, it's a stirring, but it was only for the first person that got into the water. You see, the first person that got into the water. Now, see, the pool of Bethesda was for everybody. You know, it was for everybody, but it was the first one that got in. That's right. You have a pool, Come on. and it's called a well of salvation yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that springs up yeah. into everlasting life. Yeah. You got your own personal pool there. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. We need to stir, stir that personal pool up, you see. The river is not for you and I, it's for others. Yeah, that's good. The river flows out of you, it's for others. Yeah. The well is for you. Yeah. It's personal. Yeah. It's personal. Yeah. It's personal. Yeah. So let's dip into that well and see what God has planned for you and I. Yeah. Because he said we are workers together yeah. with him. Yeah. And when we all come together in that vein, there is going to be a sound. Oh, there's going to be a sound. Oh, there's going to be a sound in the earth and a disturbance <laughs> because people don't, a lot of people do not like Jesus. They don't want to hear about Jesus. They don't want to have anything to do with the miracles, uh, 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 the signs, the wonders. They don't have anything to do with that because they say we're too loud. We make too much noise. Those tongues don't make sense. You see, they're not really interested in finding out about the tongues either. You see? They just don't want us to rise up just like the devil didn't want Jesus to preach the gospel. Amen? But we're going to do it because the word of God declares that we need to do it. So the first one that got in the water when the angel stirred it got healed. You notice when Jesus was talking with the, the guy at the well, uh, he asked him one simple question. <laughs> Will thou be made whole? Or do you want to be well? Yeah. Well, every time, you know, I've been here, every time I get ready to get in the water, I just can't seem to get in there quick enough. You know, my legs, both of my legs, I'm, I'm crippled. I can't walk. He's telling everything except for answering the question that Jesus said. And you see, many times, that's what's happening to us. Jesus is talking to us, and we're giving them all kinds of excuses and everything. We're not responding to him correctly. We're not hearing what he's saying because we're dull in our spirit. We're dull in our spirit. So guess why God wants to stir up so it can become clear. You see, when we stir up the chocolate milk, what happened? There's a, there's a, it becomes one. After, when it drops down, you see two colors. It's like, man, is it chocolate milk or is it white milk? But when you stir it up real good, then it becomes chocolate milk. You see, when we stir ourselves up real good, then clarity. Then we begin to hear clearer. We begin to see better. All of a sudden, you see our eyes open. Because that's the way God designed it, is to come and flow to our spirit man. 
Amen? Amen. So anyway, he gave them all those excuses and everything. And then Jesus basically uh, just put them in position to get healed. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't really his faith. Because <laughs> if it was his faith, he would have had it. Right. It was not his faith. So Jesus basically got him and basically told him to stand up, grab your bed, and get up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And some people, that's what you have to tell them. Yeah. If you get the, the word of faith out of your spirit, you can say, get up off of that bed and pick it up and stand up. Yeah. And that's basically what he did. He grabbed that thing and got up like that. And, uh, he probably didn't know what he, It hit him so, so fast that he probably didn't know what happened. Yeah. All of a sudden, he's just... And then like, whoa, I'm standing. <laughs> you see? And that's what God is trying to get us to a point that we can go out and stir up people yeah, yeah. and help people receive their healing and help people receive their deliverance, yeah. you see? And help people see that Jesus is Lord and he's King of kings and they need him in their lives. Hallelujah. Amen? So that's why we got to stir and stir, and we have to keep stirring. We have to wake up in the morning stirring. Yeah. In the afternoon, stir yourself a little bit more. Uh, in the evening, stir yourself a little bit more. At nighttime, stir yourself. When you go to bed, stir yourself. Yes, Don't fill yourself with some garbage. Come on. Don't fill yourself with garbage, because that'll put out the fire. You see, the stirring causes the fire to rise. When we stir ourselves up, and especially when you pray in tongues, remember the tongue, the fire comes with a tongue, yeah. you see? And that fire, that tongue sparks the fire. Yeah. It sparks the fire. It, it fires us up. It refreshes us. Yeah. So that's why we have to keep doing it and keep doing it and keep doing it. You see, it's like we're breaking through to what God has called us to do. It's like we got a big sledgehammer and we're going... Bam! And it's busting open. And pretty soon you see a little light opening right there. And pretty soon the wall just, bam, the wall caves in. Yeah, yeah. And then you can see clearly what God has planned for you. Because the, the, the little G God has blinded the minds of the people. And he don't want them to see. And he don't want you or I to see either. Because he knows what we got in Christ Jesus. He knows that he was defeated. Yeah before all his homeboys. You see, Jesus made an embarrassing thing for the devil. He whipped them right before all his homeboys. You see, if you got in a fight at school and all your homeboys is right there and they saw you get beat up, that's embarrassing. Totally embarrassing. That's what happened to the devil. He triumphed over him in it. Made a show of him openly. Actually, actually, the word of God said he put on a parade after he beat him up, basically. He's on a parade on one of those things, on those floats, and he's all beat up and everything. But he's being paraded around so everybody can see that he's a loser. Loser, 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 loser. He cannot defeat you when you're stirred up. He cannot beat you when you're stirred up because the Christ begins to rise up on the inside of you. The Christ, the hope of glory, begins to rise and shine, and he begins not to see you, but he begins to see Christ. And when he sees Christ, he has nightmares of what happened over 2,000 years ago. Nightmares, nightmares that he got beat, he got whipped. So don't let that devil deceive you. Don't let him beat you because he really legally cannot whip a born again Christian. He cannot. As long as you have Christ in you, the hope of glory, he cannot beat you. So here's what he does. That's why we got to renew our mind. Because if you don't renew your mind, he's going to come and say, you know what? He's going to take some of the word of God, just like he did to Jesus, you see? And he's going to twist it. And he's going to speak it into you, what he wants to do to you, because he can't do it to you. But he knows 
you can do it to yourself because you got the power. Here's the key right here. He knows you got the power. He doesn't have the power over you, but you do. Your biggest enemy is not the devil. It's you. So that's why the devil works on you. He said, I'm going to keep working on you. I'm going to keep working on you until I bring, until, I, until you just get so tired of me, you just give in. And when you give in, you'll begin to do everything I want you to do. You'll be able to get in the flesh, you'll get in the flesh, and you'll stay out of that spirit realm because I know every time you're in that spirit realm, in that realm of faith, I can't beat you. That's what the devil said. I can't beat you in that realm. So I got to take you out of that realm and get you over here where I can beat you every time. But our secret is we don't have to let him do that. If we be renewed in the spirit of our mind, we keep ourselves fired up, we keep ourselves plugged up and charged up, we'll be energized every day. Every day. And this energy, this power is not by feeling, it's by unknowing. It's by knowing what you have done with the Word of God, what you are doing with the Word of God. Not just a confession, but you're reading and feeding your spirit because your power and your strength is in your spirit. If your spirit is weak, then you are weak. Then you're going to face failure if your spirit is weak. But if your spirit is strong, the devil don't stand a chance. So let's rise up. Let's rise up and stir up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I made a statement right here. I said, when you fellowship, who, no, put it, like, turn it around. Who you fellowship with will determine your ability to stay full of the Spirit. I'm going to say that again. Who you fellowship with will determine your ability to stay full of the Spirit. You need to be around people that are going to keep you stirred up. That's not going to put out your fire, but it's going to add to your fire. That means they're going to speak faith to you. Even when you are attacked by the enemy in sickness and you're going through it, they're not going to look at you and say, Oh, what's the matter, brother? They're going to say, Hey, Hey, brother, by the stripes of Jesus, you're healed. I, I see that you're healed because I know over 2,000 years ago, Jesus paid your price in full. So you're healed. You'll tell them the good news. You see? You won't tell them what he can see and what he can feel. The Word of God says the things that you can see are not more real than the things that you cannot see. It's the things that's in the spiritual world that are everlasting. You see, this came out of the spirit. You see? This came into somebody's mind and they built it. You see? But it can be destroyed. This can be changed right here. And everything we see can be changed. So that's why we can't be moved by what we see or what we hear. That's why we walk by faith, not by feelings, not by sight. That's God's way. He speaketh those things which be not as though they were. That's what God does. He calls it. He calls it. And one person said, I like Charles Capps. He, he made this illustration. He said, the reason I call Spot, because I want him to come to me. <laughs> so that's why I'm saying, hey, Spot, Spot, come here. Yeah. That's why I call for healing. Yeah. That's why I call for deliverance. <laughs> That's why I call forth my finances. You see? Because I wanted to come to me. Come to me. Obey me. Obey me. Come to me right now in Jesus' name. That's God's way of doing it. Well, how come it don't show up right away? It will if you keep working on it and you keep believing. That's what faith, if it showed up immediately, there would be no faith. You have to, that's why we have to trust him. Trust him. Amen? Hallelujah. Let's look at Acts 10, 44. The 
this is good. Hallelujah. <laughs> While Peter, glory be to God, it'll fall on you sometime. While Peter was still speaking these words, now he's speaking God's word. He ain't speaking the devil's words. You ain't going to have the spirit of God fall on you while you're speaking the devil's words. You're going to get what you're calling for. You're going to get what you're speaking. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. While Peter was still speaking, I mean, he still got the words in his mouth. The Holy Ghost just all of a sudden fell upon those who heard the word. Just fell on them. Now, what did it do? Did it just fall on them and knock them out? No, it did something for them. And those of the circumcision, you know who those are, the Jews. Well, they just want you to, get to be, be religious, be circumcised like me. Now, you got to realize one thing here before I finish this scripture here. Back in those days, it was the norm for everybody to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Come on, come on. Even these circumcised Jews. That's right. They all spoke, talking in tongues was norm, the norm. Yeah. If you didn't speak with tongues, actually the Jews didn't believe you were saved. You'll see that in the scripture. That's the only thing that convinced them is when people got saved that were not Jews and they spoke with tongues. Then they, they could not deny it. They're going like, what? What? God, what did you do? <laughs> They're Gentiles. Right. They thought it was only for them. Yeah. Yeah. Now, look what it said. And those of the circumcision who believed were astonished. They were astonished. They're like, what? God, what did you do? As many as came with Peter because the gift of the Holy Spirit hath been poured out on the Gentile also. Yes. Next verse. This is the key right here. This is, what, this is how they knew. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then Peter answered. Come on. Okay, now that we, now that we know they're saved. That's what Peter said. Now we know they're saved. Uh, can anyone forbid water that these should not be baptized who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? Can you see that right there? Yeah. It was the norm. Yeah. It was the norm. But today we make it like, you know, where is that in the Bible? These churches, they see it in the Bible. They just skip over it. Yeah. <laughs> they skip over it. They don't even try to explain it because they can't explain it. They can't explain it. It's in the Bible. Matter of fact, there's a scripture in uh, Corinthians, the 14th chapter, 1 Corinthians said, forbid not to speak with tongues. Amen. Whoa. What? God said that. <laughs> God said that. Forbid not to speak with tongues. That mean I'm in sin? Probably so. <laughs> For him that know it to do good and do it did not, to him it is sin. If you know it and you're not doing it, it's sin to you. It is sin to you. You're sitting around every day and not praying. You, you know you pray and you feel with the Holy Ghost. And you just don't want to pray in tongue. You're sinning. I know people don't like to hear that. But I'm trying to, we're trying to wake us up, aren't we? We're trying to get awake. So that we can see and that other peoples that we're supposed to be influencing can see. Yes. If we can't see, how do we expect them to see? Right. So we got to begin to see. Yes. Amen? Amen? Let's look at another occasion in uh, Acts 11. And the Holy Ghost likes to fall. How many of you ever had the Holy Ghost fall on you? Yes. You just unexpected. It's nice. But then you... When you go back the next time, you don't follow, you're like, man, <laughs> Holy Ghost, where are you? Still right there. He ain't trying to satisfy your feelings. Can you understand what I'm saying? That's just a fringe benefit that you're getting, that good feeling, that bubbly feeling. Woohoo, man, I feel like I can run through a troop and leap over a wall like David said. Amen. You do in that moment. You're like, woohoo. But then sometime when you wake up in the morning, you feel dead as a doorknob. But do you go by that? No. I grab a hold to the word. 
I grab a hold to the word and I say, I got the life of God in me. I got Zoe life in me. And I'm going to stir it up right now. <laughs> and then you stir it up. Amen? Amen. Acts, uh, skip the, the next one. Go to Acts 11. And then I'll go back to the other one. I want to do this one first. Acts 11, 15. The Holy Ghost falls on them. You know, I've had time in prayers. That, that I come into prayer. Sometimes it's just be so easy easy because the help of the Holy Ghost come. He come, just falls on me. And when he falls on you, it makes you so easy to pray in other tongues. You're just like, woo, you're just going for it. Woo-hoo, 100 miles an hour. Then sometime you come in here and you're like, Rosava, Bendele, Rusaka. And, and you ask, man, am I saved? <laughs> Maybe I need to get saved again. You feel like you can't get started. It's like your carburetor is all, you know, Clogged up and everything. <laughs> Don't be moved by that. We all go through that. We all go through that. And, and many times the devil try to discourage you. He want to stop you from praying in tongues anyway. He realizes up the power of a tongue talker. I remember Mary K Catherine Baxter. She wrote the book of Divine Revelation of Hell. You ever get a chance to read that? Read that. We... We had her up here in the church I was in. We had her up here twice in Anchorage and literally talked to her, and she shared her testimony. And uh, it's a, woo, it's an eye-opening testimony, put it that way. <laughs> but anyway, uh, she said when she was in hell, when Jesus came and got her for 40 days and took her down into hell, and she toured hell. By now, many people have been to hell and have toured hell. And it's, for, it's just for the mercy of God so that we, we don't or None of the world goes to hell. That's what his desire is. But anyway, while she was down there in hell, she saw, saw Satan, Satan, and uh, he had two other big shots with him or whatever, and they were talking, and they were talking about those tongue talkers. And they were saying, man, those tongue talkers, we don't know what we're going to do with them. We, we just, they, we, they're just not manageable. <laughs> Basically, that's what they were saying. They were saying that we just create all kinds of problems and they can't do nothing with us. You see, that's how powerful it is. And that's why he don't want people to get filled. He don't want people to get filled because that empowers you. You see, you get out of your mind. You know what a crazy man is, don't you? Well, that's the way the devil look at you when you feel with the Holy Ghost and you after him. You're like a crazy man. And he's like running. That's why he says resist the devil and he'll flee from you, run from you like in stark terror. Terror. That's a crazy man. Yeah. You see, he actually sees Jesus chasing him. You see, because Jesus is in you if you allow him to rise up inside of you. That's, what he, that's who he's scared of, not you. The Christ in you. Yeah, yeah. Amen. That's why we have to stay stirred up. Hallelujah. Now, Acts 11, 15. And as I began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on them as upon us at the beginning. Where was that in Acts, uh, Acts the second chapter? Yeah. In the beginning. Was that the only? That another verse. Did I only have one verse? Oh, okay. So it fell on them again. I just want to give an example of the Holy Ghost falling on you. So if he falls on you sometimes, that's just a nice fringe benefit. But don't depend on that. Yeah. It's just like a baby having a bottle, you know. Baby get the bottle. You give the baby a bottle, and the baby want another bottle. Yeah. And why? Holy Ghost, fall on me, fall on me. So don't expect that's going to happen every time you pray. So don't get accustomed to it in that sense. But we can get into the presence of God, but we're, he's not going to baby us. He's going to help us grow up in him. Amen? No. I want to look at another angle. Uh, let's look at the, uh, yeah, let's look at the Philippian uh, jailer there in Acts 16. Hallelujah. These are things that will happen when you're stirred up, what you would do, how you would react. Yeah. You see, when you're not stirred up, you act one way. When you are stirred up, you act a totally different way. Because when you're stirred up, you're back into that moment of a, a, another man. You see, there's another man in you. Yeah, yeah. 
woman and man. You see, I'm talking about both of them. You know, woman is nothing but a womb man. Woman with a womb. That's all it is. So. And they brought them to the magistrates, the, the captains, those in charge, and said, these men, Jews, exceedingly trouble our city. Woo! You hear what I'm saying? See, that's what needs to happen today. I don't hear no news about that. We hear about everybody else troubling the city. But the Christians, where are they? Where's the church? Where is the church? And they teach customs which are not lawful for us, being Romans, to receive and observe. They didn't want to cooperate with the word of God, basically. We don't believe in that. That's what they're saying. Then the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates tore off their clothes and commanded them to be beaten with rods. We, we're not there yet either. Anybody got beaten yet? Nope, don't see no hands. I haven't. I haven't even come close to that. And when they had laid many, you hear that? When they had laid many stripes on them, they threw them into prison, commanding the jailer to keep them secure. Suffering for the cause of Christ. Suffering because of the word of God. Having received such a charge, he put them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in the stocks. I get a call. Mama! <laughs> That's what some people be saying. Uh, I need my phone call. I got to call Mama. <laughs> I got to get out of this jail. But they didn't say that. They didn't start crying. They didn't even get quiet. You see? You see? When something happens to you, you don't get quiet. You begin to respond to your spirit. Yeah. And this is what happened here. But at midnight, yeah. Paul and Silas were praying. Yeah. They began to pray. Yeah. They began to pray and singing hymns to God. And the prisoners were listening to them. That means they were making a lot of noise. Yeah. Right. And all the prisoners around them heard them sing and pray. And then God manifests himself. Right. You see, because God is pleased with praise. Yes. Not just praying, but praise. Because prayer, uh, praise is actually a part of prayer. Yes. You should end at least with praise. Yes. Why? Right. Right. Counting it done. It's done. Yes. As far as I'm concerned, it's done. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory be to God. Yes. So suddenly, there was a great earthquake. A great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were open, and everyone's chains were loose. Even the other prisoners. <laughs> they set them free as well as those that prayed. Amen. Yeah. So you see, we're not only can set break the chains off of our lives but we can break the chains off of the world's life. And that's what we're supposed to be doing. Yes, Amen? Amen? Healing the sick, raising the dead, and all of those things. And the keeper of the prison awakened from sleep and seeing the prison doors open, supposing the prisoners had fled, drew his sword, and was about to kill himself. You can stop right there. He was about to kill himself because he thought, you know, if they had got away, he was really a dead man normally. You see, but what happened? He came, he fell back in and said, what must I do to be saved? Which told me he was listening to their conversations. He was listening to the word that they were speaking. And so he got saved, his whole family got saved, started a church. Amen? Amen? So that is what God is looking for in these last days, for the church to rise up like that and make a commotion in the earth for him. You see, that he will be glorified and that he will be magnified. Here's something that Augustine said. He described it as spiritual intoxication, is what we're talking about. And drinking in this day, the Holy Spirit has come to abide in you. Do not make him. Oh, 
Here it is. Oh, four, five. Sorry. <clears throat> Make a withdrawal. Do not exclude him from your heart in any way. He is a good guest. Yes. The Holy Spirit. Yes. He found you empty. Anybody in here found you full? Anybody in here found you full? I don't think so. All of us is empty. And he filled you. He found you hungry, and he satisfied you. He found you thirsty, and he has intoxicated you. May he truly intoxicate you and I. Amen? That's what we really want. We want to be so full of God that we're overflowing uh, with him. Let's look at another situation. The woman at the well, John 4. Thank you, baby. Let me go back to that one. Okay, the woman at the well, uh, John 4. So he came to the city of Samaria where he called Sychar near the plot of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being weary from his journey, sat thus by the well. It was about the sixth hour. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. Then the woman of Samaria said to him, how is it that you being a Jew ask a drink from me? Now you got to realize she was a Samaritan woman. They call Samaritan women dogs or Samaritans, period dogs because they were not uh they, they what they call a half breed you see they were not jews for jews have no dealings with samaritans so that's why it was strange for jesus to ask her for a drink jesus answered and said to her if you knew the gift of god and who it is who says to you give me a drink you would have asked him and he would have given you living water now, this got her attention Living water? <laughs> the woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where then do you get this, that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it itself, as well as his sons and his livestock? Jesus answered and said to her, Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst, but the water that I shall give him will be in him a well or a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman said to him, sir, give me this water. <laughs> she wasn't no fool. Look, sir, give me this water. Even though she didn't understand it, she knew that she needed this water. Sir, give me this water that I may not thirst, nor come here to draw. You can stop right there. Anyway, uh, you know how the story goes on. And uh, Jesus began to tell her, asked her about her husband, and he told her how many husbands she had and everything. And it, eventually what happened, she left, and she went to tell everybody, come see a man who told me everything about my life. Yeah. I mean, she blah, 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 blah. I mean, that, that, that's a preacher right there. That's a preacher. You go tell. You can't help but the thing to tell the things that you've seen and that you have heard. You see, that should be a common thing in our life. We can't help but to tell those things. Now, um, we probably won't go to Philip, but I just want to talk about Philip a little bit. Uh, Philip, who was evangelist, and uh, God had, had sent an angel to Philip, and he the angel told him to go to a certain place to meet this Ethiopian eunuch. And uh, anyway, God, God knows how to set up things, you see. If we just stay in the flow of the spirit, you see, he'll hook us up supernaturally. Supernaturally to minister to people. And so Philip obeyed. He went to where this uh, Ethiopian eunuch was, and he saw him. And then the spirit of God said, catch up with him. You know, uh, and he caught up with him, and the man had just been there, come to town there to worship God. So he must have just found out about the, the word of God. And so anyway, he was actually on his way back. And so anyway, uh, 
And then he asked him, Philip said, you know, you understand what you're reading? He said, no, man, I don't understand what I'm reading. In today's language, I don't have a clue what I'm reading. But he was being led. The Spirit of God was leading him, you see, to salvation. And anyway, uh, Philip interpreted the scriptures to him. And after he interpreted the scriptures, the, the guy believed the scriptures. And he passed by the water and said, hey, what's stopping me from getting baptized? And he went and got baptized, him and uh, the eunuch went down in the water, and Philip came out, and the Holy Ghost pew, took him for a ride. Uh, I just want you to know that you got transportation on the inside of you. <laughs> Supernatural transportation. <laughs> hey, we're going to use it in these last days, believe me, because there may not be no transportation that we can get to where we need to go, where God wants to send you, and he's he got, woo. I can't wait for that one. Pew, pew, over in Africa. Praise the Lord, everyone. Don't have my passport or whatever, but we, we, we're going to go ahead and preach this sermon, and I'm going back home. <laughs> That'd be the way to go. I'd rather go that way than doing all that flying anyway. <laughs> but we got supernatural transportation on the inside of us, the Holy Ghost. You see, if we follow him, you see, he'll lead us into some supernatural situation. Now, I want to tell one. I can't help but to speak. I have to tell some of my testimony. And I want to tell one in particular about my niece. And this has been about, she's about 30, 30 something now. Uh, no, is she 30? No, she's younger than that. It's about, about 10 years ago. I say about 10 years ago. Uh, we were called to uh, the hospital, me and my wife, because her mom and dad wasn't, they, they couldn't get a hold of them. And uh, we went up to the hospital, and we heard she had, had a bad accident. And uh, so we went up, and we sat in the chaplain's office. The chaplain was bad because the chaplain was giving us all this bad news, bad news, bad news. Well, we sat and listened to, listened to him and on the inside. You know, my spirit's turning and everything. And then finally, after he gave us the bad news, then we went out to where she was at. And, like, she's, uh, like, right here. And the doctor's right here. And uh, we're standing about right here. And so... The doctor came out, and he gave the bad news, and he's just going through the bad news, going through the bad news and everything. And I was getting madder and madder in my spirit. And then all, I'm listening, you know, see what, what, what does the Holy Ghost want to do. And all of a sudden, he just told me, he said, just pray. And he told me how to pray. So I went, and I, she's in the coma. She's on the breathing machine right there in front of the doctors. And, uh, and I walk over to her just like this here, grab her hand like this here with her mom you know, right tight to me, and uh, I grabbed her hand like that and prayed for probably less than a minute, released her hand, and we walked right back over to the other side like that, and within 30 seconds, she pops up and starts pulling all those plugs out of her, just like that, poof, 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 right in front of the doctor, right in front of the doctor, see, being obedient by the Spirit of God. Instead of, I could have just, <laughs> just crying, and I would have missed it. Yeah. Yeah. You, you see what I'm saying? He couldn't do nothing with me. I was all in the, we've been all in the flesh. Yeah. All in the flesh. But because of a simple obedience, yeah. you know, all I did was just do what he told me to do. He did the work. Yeah. Wasn't nothing I could do anyway, yeah. you see? But did that, and today she's doing fine. They said she's going to have brain damage. They said she's got rods in her legs and all that. She's totally healed. Totally healed. Totally healed. See, this is why we need to know more about spirit, soul, body, so we can get out of our, I like to say, our knucklehead. <laughs> this knucklehead sometimes gets us in trouble because all it does is go by feelings. It's guessing here, guessing about that, guessing about that. Spirit of God is precise. The Spirit of God is reality. Not life. Life's not reality. The Spirit of God is reality. Because he showed you how to navigate your life yes, right. and how to win in life. Yes, right. Amen? Amen? So that's what we want to do. If you get a chance, uh, read. I was going to talk about the ten lepers, and uh, I'll just mention just one about Jesus. Jesus was our perfect example. Remember, uh, that's in Luke, uh, the fourth chapter, I believe it is. Yes. Luke 4, where the Holy Spirit, from the first verse, led him into the wilderness right. by the Spirit of God. You see, sometimes he'll lead you somewhere where you think, well, why are you leave me here? I thought you'd lead me always to good things. I thought you'd just lead me to just prosperity and blessings. 
Because sometimes he leads you right, in the, right to the middle of a trial or a test. You see? That's why we got to walk by faith. So we can go through the tests and come out shining. You see? Come out faithful on the other side. And then God can do more with us because he, 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 he wants to do that so he can show us what's in, in our heart. He already knows what's in our heart. Sometimes we need to know what's in our hearts. So I want to encourage you, stir yourself up, fire yourself up, become more thirsty, become more hungry for God's word. And if you're not filled with the Holy Ghost, get filled with the Holy Ghost. You might say, I don't understand it. I don't understand it either yet. Nobody does. But we do know it works and it is the truth. It's God. Same spirit. Same exact spirit. Because a lot of people say, well, that's of the devil. Well, if that's of the devil, that, that's of God. That's God. But they don't realize what they're saying. And a lot of times, these are Christians saying, that's of the devil. And they need to read their Bible again. Amen? Amen. So I want to encourage you. Stir your lives up so other lives can be touched. Other lives can be healed. Other lives can be delivered. Other lives can be set free. They're waiting on you and I. That's what they're waiting on. They're not waiting on the world. The world doesn't have the answer. We have the answer. And it's the Christ in us, the hope of glory. Welcome. You're stepping into my new season. Being prepared as he works up, work in me. I've been empowered to do not well. Cause I walk in new life abundantly. I'm stepping into my new season. Being prepared for the work of the ministry. Then how I can do God's will as he prepares.